find, given that I have the two sets of parallel lines, that it's important to know where you're going. So where, what am I trying to get to here? Yeah? Uh, angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. I want 1 and 3 to be congruent. So I'm going to come over to my picture and don't mark them congruent because they are not congruent. But I'm going to try and get there. So I'm going to say I'm trying to get this guy and that guy to have their thing. They're going to be congruent eventually. Okay? So now that I want these guys congruent, <coughs> now is when you start thinking about all the different relationships that you know and all the different angles that are showing up here, and you start to decide, how can I bring them together? And so you ask yourself, do one and three have a relationship of their own I could use? Are they alternate interior or corresponding? And you think? They're, oh, they're not alternate exterior. That would be angle two. Two and one are corresponding. Well, let's just make sure. I, can I not go directly with these guys? No. 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 Lava. And so that's the lava. Can't do it. Everybody will get burned up. So instead you have to figure out, well, what are some ones that I do know are related? And that's when you get two and one. Two and one. I know these guys are corresponding. And I know the lines are parallel, so what do the parallel lines imply about these two guys? They are going to be congruent. Okay, I've got that far. I'm going to hold that in my head. That could be useful. What else do I know in this picture? Oh, yes. Angle of three uh, is alternate exit. Alternate exterior. Angle, angle 3 and angle 2 are alternate exterior. So they would also be congruent. And what if 3 and 4 are same side exterior? They would be supplementary. Would that be very helpful? No. Well, yeah, actually it could be if you want a longer proof. And so, you, so there are lots of relationships, but as soon as you... Oh, look, both the relationships you found, though... See how they contain the same angle? Yeah. That's a link in your chains now. So now you know how you can possibly connect things into a proof. Now that you kind of roughed that out, then you start putting stuff in your proof. So what do we want to start with? <coughs> Which one? Uh, angle 2 and angle 1 are close. Uh, I can't start with that. Given. given. Which given? The, the, the A is parallel to B. A is parallel to B. Okay, that's the one everybody starts with, but okay. Could I have started with M and N? M and M and M and M and M and M and Okay. So, and so then you think, okay, in my next box then, what are we going to use these parallel lines to imply? Because there's lots of things they imply. For lines M and N, which relationship did we use? Was it the 3 and 2 for M and N? It wasn't 3 and 2. Which parallels do they go with? <coughs> they go with A and B. See how 3 and 2 are exterior to A and B? Yeah. Yeah, we don't want them. So for M and N, it's going to be 1 and 2 are corresponding. So I'm going to say that my corresponding angles... We need A and B, though. Oh, we are on A and B. <coughs> Go get the candy. And who, who did I just criticize? That was you. Go get candy, too, because you were thinking the right thing. For A and B, it will be angle 2 and 3 are... How are they related? Uh, al Alternate exterior angles. exterior angles. And so if the lines are parallel, how, what do they have to do? If the lines are parallel, what has to be true about these alternate exterior angles? Yeah? They are congruent. And so angle 2 will be congruent to angle 3. So obviously I want to make these guys have equal measures, right? Because that would be the next step? No. Oh. 
Yeah, see, so I'm trying to just get congruent. Do I need to make them into measures right now? No. No. If I need to later, I can always do it later. But for now, since I know where I'm going, I don't think I need to yet, so I'm not going to bother. Instead, I'm going to go and do another given. So let's do phenomena. M is parallel to N, which is another given. Um, let's pick on someone who hasn't answered a whole lot yet. Cole! I've got some parallel lines. What's something that they can imply for me? Um. What relationship do I want to do with lines M and N? Two and three are... We already did two and three because they were with A and B. Two and one are corresponding. And what will I know about those corresponding angles? They'll be congruent. So that's when I'll go angle two is congruent to angle three. And I'm an idiot that should say a one. But I said it before anybody called me out on it, so sadly no candy for that one. Because it is, it's two and one. I am just so good. Mm. So I've got two is congruent to three, and two is congruent to one. But neither of those are what I want. Okay, well, what does the transitive property tell me? It tells you if A is congruent to B. A is congruent to B. B is congruent to C. So should I put, so look guys, look at my proof. See how three is in this left chain? Does that mean I have to put it on the left side over here? No. Uh -uh. no. So which one do you think I should write first? One. Angle one, because you want it in the order they're asking for it. So if you can do it without having to make a separate box, do it. So angle one is congruent to angle three from your transitive property of congruence. That's crazy. I know, it's just crazy. <laughs> Well, don't worry, they get worse. <laughs> we had to start you off simple so you wouldn't cry too hard. That one was really... Oh, it, was, it was very purple and blue. It was something. It was something. Okay. But it wasn't easy. Oh, we would never say that. Ever. But it wasn't Nope. Oh, no, you dropped a wrapper. That was severely hard. Okay, so let's try another. Now, this one has several ways to attack it. In fact, the past two classes I've done this with my students, they have both done it different ways. So I'm interested to see how you guys choose to work this proof. The nice thing about proofs, though, as long as you get there in the end and all your steps are right, it doesn't matter if you took a long path or a short path. So start off with what you're given and make sure you put that in your picture. So I know A is parallel to B. So that's these two horizontal guys. And I know M is still parallel to N. So that's going to be these guys. And then what should I do now that I've got my givens written in and marked? Uh -huh. I should I should figure out where am I going. I can figure out what path to take a lot better if I know where I'm going. So I'm going to come in here and look and go, wow, I need to prove that 1 and 5 add to 180. Just so you know, here's angle 1 and here's angle 5. Do they have a direct relationship I can use? No. They do not. So I can't just make one chain. Darn. So instead, you're going to have to figure out connections you can make. And look at what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove that stuff adds to 180. What does that make you think of? Supplementary. Supplementary. Do I have things involving parallels that are supplementary? 
I do. So if I can maybe come up with things that involve being supplementary, that's going to help me get to stuff being supplementary. So you start looking around, and there's lots of options here. What are some things you can get from A being parallel to B? Here's A and B. What's some stuff you can say from that? There's lots of things. Pick one. Um, Ibrahim, from these two blue parallels, what's something you can say for sure? What's a relationship? Well, it couldn't be two if it's exterior. Ah, four and three here are consecutive exterior. What's going to be true about them? They're going to be supplementary. Could that be useful? Possibly, because I know I need supplementary things. So that could be useful. Okay. What else would be true? Yes. One and two are corresponding. I know that one and two are corresponding, so they would be congruent, possibly useful. And then four and two are linear pair. And four and two are linear pair, which would also be something that's supplementary. Okay. So I've got lots of different things going on. Are there other things I could see here? What about four and five? Corresponding. They're corresponding. What about three and two? Alternate exterior. They're alternate exterior, which means they are congruent. So I've got lots of paths to pick. Okay. What, what do y'all want to start with? We can pick any of those and go somewhere with it. Five and four are corresponding. M and... M and M and M and Well, oh, we don't have anything easy in here. We don't want to anger the math gods. Jesus. No, not him either. The math gods don't like him either. <laughs> yes? Start with a given. Start with a given. Which one would you like to start with? Uh, a and B. A and B. So that's going to be A is parallel to B. That's a given. Now, there's lots of things you can get from A and B. Which thing do y'all want to get? Do you want to use a congruent thing or a supplementary thing? I don't care because they're all true. Oh, um, four and five are corresponding angles. They are corresponding, yep. And these are alternate, or sorry, same side exterior, and these are alternate exterior. I know the relationships, but remember, on my next step, what does my implied statement have to start with? Parallel, Parallel lines. lines. So now I need to pick which set of relationships I want to focus on. I could focus on the corresponding ones, I could focus on the alternate exterior ones, or I could focus on these same side exterior ones. Alternate exterior. Alternate exterior? Okay. So what's going to be true about my alternate exterior angles? They're going to be congruent. So if I use them, that's going to make 2 be congruent to 3. Okay. So y'all are doing it the Miss Shooter way. This is the way she chose. Okay. All right, I've got two congruent to three. Are either of those angles in what I'm trying to prove? Nope. So I don't have a 180, I don't have an angle five, and I don't have an angle one. Okay, so now what? Maybe another given? Okay, so M parallel to N? What can I get from M being parallel to N? Oh, one and two are corresponding. And since the lines are parallel, what will that tell me? What's congruent? The corresponding angles will be congruent, which will be angle one and angle two. Okay, so I've got one and two, and I've got two and three. Well, at least angle one has joined the party. 
I've got one of the three things I need. Yep. Now what? I could transitive these together, sure. <coughs> so they're both congruent to two, which means angle one will be congruent to angle three by the transitive property. So I've got angle one here is congruent to angle three down here. Yep, there it is. I still don't have a 180 and I still don't have angle five. So I, I need to bring stuff in now that's gonna involve angle five and involve the number 180. So start looking at angle five and see if, is there something there that can give me angle five and or the number 180? Yeah, angle three and angle five. Are oh, these guys are a linear pair, which means they will be Supplementary, so that would give me the 180. So let's start with that. So I need the given. What given do I have? M is linear pair. Angle three and five are a linear pair. That one doesn't involve parallels, does it? Oh, linear a, pair. Remember, a you can see in the picture. Yeah. Does A parallel to B tell me a linear pair? No. Remember, linear pair is one of the things you can see in the picture. Remember, there are four things that you can get directly from your picture. Let me swipe this from you. Remember? I can get linear pair directly from it. So that's a given. So angle 5 is a linear pair with angle 3 is given in the picture. And then what does that tell me about angle 5 and angle 3? So angle 5 is supplementary to angle three because linear pair implies supplementary angles. And so then we go, okay, what do supplementary angles imply? So the two angles sum to 180 degrees. So the measure of angle five plus, I'm going to do three first because it's smaller. Measure of angle three plus the measure of angle five has to equal 180. Oh, now I've got the 180 degree thing and I've got angle five, in, oh, but it's got angle three in it. I'm trying to prove something with angle one and angle five, not angle three and angle five. Oh, if I want to substitute angle 3 in here, can I do it if it doesn't have the measure? No. The answer is no. If I want to substitute for a measure, I have to turn this into a measure. So now I have to say the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3 because congruent angles imply equal angle measures. Now can I replace my angle 3 with the angle 1? Yeah. Now I can do it. And that's going to be substitution. So I'm going to bring these guys together and I'm going to replace angle 3 with angle 1. And it's which, tr which substitution? It's POE because I have Equality. In fact, substitution is only ever P-O-E. <coughs> okay? Is that what I was trying to prove? Yes. Is it in all the right orders? Yeah. Phew! That was the long way. Oh. You want to see a shorter way? Yeah. Yes. Well, look. No, this, is, this is just one that my other class did. They said M was parallel to N. Which means that 4 and 1 were supplementary. Why? Consecutive exterior. They're same side exterior. So these two guys had to be supplementary. That's what they said. Which means they had to add up to 180. And then you said, well, look at 5 and 4. What do I know about them? 
They are corresponding angles. So they have to be congruent from A parallel to B. And then I turned them into equal measures and replaced the 4 with the 5. Is all that logic good? But what's the difference between a corresponding and uh, consecutive? consecutive? Consecutive means same side. But you're either both same side exterior on the outside or both same side interior. Corresponding, you're both on the same side, but one is in between the double lines and one is outside. Okay? So these two proofs accomplish the same thing. But this one had three givens, and this one only had two. Does it matter? Does not. So turn it over. And let's try another. I'm glad everybody on the video is going to hear the excitement. Oh, yeah. So let's look at example three. And first, we're going to do what? Read our givens and mark them down. So BC is going to bisect angle ABD. So I'm going to find BC. And it's good. What, does, what do angle bisectors do? Oh, why? Two, 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 yeah, and so I'm, I'm going to know that since I have this bisector, that these two angles are going to be congruent. I'm just going to mark that now because I know that it's going to happen in, in my chain. Okay? So that's something I know. I also know that BC is parallel to EF. That's this guy. And so now I've marked the things that are given. What should I look for next? What we're trying to prove. What we're trying to prove. So I'm going to try and prove BEF, that's this guy, is congruent to CBD. Now first, check and see. Is there a nice simple way? Is there a direct relationship between these two angles? It, it doesn't look like it. They're not corresponding. They're not same side interior. So there is, oh darn, I can't go straight there. So now I'm going to have to do a proof. So how am I going to bring these together? What can I do? Right by given. So sure. So BC is going to bisect angle ABD. That's given. And then what did that angle bisector imply? Two congruent adjacent angles, because I'm talking about an angle bisector. What would be the names? of my two congruent adjacent angles. And they're really so busy writing, they're not thinking about words. ABC. Angle ABC is this one. And then CBD is the other? Yes. Okay. Oh, I needed CBD. That's awesome. Look, that's one of the ones I needed for my proof. Good. But, oh, I need angle BEF. BEF has not appeared. So now we got to go over and figure out how to drag BEF into the game. So find Beth. That's this guy. Here's Beth. How can we bring Beth into the proof? What do we know uh, uh, something we can say about angle Beth? You've done a bunch. I'm going to make somebody else think. Thank you, though. Do I have any relationships with angle Beth now? What do you think, Elliot? Um, since EF and BC are parallel, and mm -hmm. they both have the um, that line on I don't know. Transversal? Yeah, tra transversal. Uh-huh. Then that, the, that would mean that BEF and ABC are BEF. 
because how? Being parallel is not enough to say they're congruent. What else had to happen? They're corresponding. They're in the same corner. So let's go back and say, okay, BC was parallel to EF. And so when I come down, I'm going to think those parallel lines are going to imply something. And they're going to imply that since these angles are corresponding, they have to be congruent. And so now I can say angle BEF is congruent to angle ADCA. I guess you could say ABSA if you pronounced your C's as soft C's. It's fine. Those of you who know Big Bird's song about the alphabet, you know, you know, you know, abdicate, blah, 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 yeah. He sings the alphabet in Sesame Street. But I can never remember it. I, can, I, do, I go backward, I don't go forward, so I can't remember the forward thing. So, okay, look, BEF has showed up in my proof. I have both ingredients I need to prove what I need to prove, how can I get them together so it looks like this? Very often it's going to be transitive or substitution. Oh look, absida is congruent to CBD and absa is congruent to DEF, <coughs> BEF. So should I say CBD is congruent to BEF? No. But aren't they congruent? So why wouldn't I say it then? So it's not how it's written. Oh, if I can avoid an extra step, should I go ahead and say it how it's written? Yeah, because yeah, we're lazy. <coughs> so angle Beth is going to be congruent to angle CBD because of the transitive property. Oh, it's con how do you know it's congruent? Because <laughs> there's a congruent there? Nice. People still ask me that. Should we say POC or POE? Whichever one you have, my friends, whichever one you have. Wait. Yay! So these guys were congruent. These guys were congruent. So therefore, they had to be congruent to each other. Okay? Now, we have two left. I want you to have lots of time for your quiz, so I'm going to allow you to choose your doom. Do you want to try example four or example five? Okay, I raise, by raise of hands, how many say problem four? Don't take the easy way out. Okay, how many say problem five? Oh, that's more for problem five. Darn, I picked the shorter one. So, so, we are given, I want you all to go with your friends and mark down what's given and mark it in the picture. Where's your given? Y'all are being recorded. Okay, I've marked my givens. So what should be the next thing you're looking at? Other givens. What you prove. What you're trying to prove. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to prove some lines parallel. Oh. Wow. 
So should I mark these other two parallel then? No. No. No! Because they are not parallel. As far as we know, they're not. And if I mark it in the picture, I might accidentally use it. So until you know something is going to be true, you never mark it. Okay? But, no, it's not. It's something we're trying to prove. Oh. Okay, never mind. I thought you were talking about the given. No, I was talking about the proof. Okay. So now that I know what I'm trying to prove, shh, aren't there a lot of things that imply parallel lines? Yeah. How many of our implied statements Four. imply parallel lines? Five. At least five? Because <laughs> remember, you can do them backward. So corresponding angles congruent will imply parallel. Alternate interiors congruent will imply parallel. Alternate exteriors congruent will imply parallel. All those things could get me to parallel. So how am I going to know which one to use? Look at the Go back to your givens. What do you notice about your givens? One of them says 180. What does 180 make you think about? So, shh. So, if I can think of some stuff that's supplementary also, maybe I can use this supplementary to prove something about these two lines being supplementary, and then that would make them be parallel? Since I've already got something supplementary, maybe I can find something else supplementary. What would be great if we could prove it was supplementary between AB and ED? Wait, angle 1 and 2 are supplementary. Ooh, if angle 1 and 2 were supplementary, would that make these guys parallel? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so maybe let's see if we can get 1 and 2 supplementary, and that would get us here. Now, I don't know that yet, but that's going to be my mental target, is maybe if I can get angle one supplementary to angle two. That's a possibility. Could I also prove that one and three are congruent? Would that make them be parallel? So maybe angle one congruent to angle three would do it? What else would make them be congruent or parallel? If one and two were supplementary, that would do it. If one and three were congruent, that would do it. What if one and six were congruent? But if it was, would it make my lines parallel? Yes. So maybe if angle one was congruent to angle six, that would do it. So I've got three possible things I could do to get what I want. I've got three ways to prove this. You get to pick whichever one seems to work for you. So now let's, now that we know these are possibilities, let's go back to the beginning and see where our, our givens lead us. Which one would you like to start with? The supplementary. This guy, it doesn't start with supplementary though, does it? No. It starts with an adding to 180. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle four equals 180. That's a given. How did they know that? Maybe they measured. Who knows? Our proof's going to be on our quiz. Not on the quiz. On the test on Friday they will be, but not on the quiz. Y'all are excited now, huh? Okay, so what do these guys adding up to 180 tell me? Uh, they're supplementary. So angle 1 has to be supplementary to angle 4 because two angles that sum to 180 degrees implies supplementary angles. <clears throat> oh, wow! Look, to prove our lines parallel, I just need one supplementary to two. I've got one supplementary to four. I'm almost there. If only... Oh, if only this four was a two, that would make life great. Sadly, four is not two, is it? 
Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But could it be? Yes. If you put your brain. Yes. If I get to another gibbon and see what I can dig out. So the other gibbon I have is my parallels. So if I go BC is parallel to GF. Now, what am I trying to bring in here? Angle two. I'm trying to get angle 2 in here. So what do I know about angle 2 that might be useful? It's corresponding to angle 4. It's corresponding to angle 4. Could you do the angle 2 and angle 3 are linear pair? If you wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, a, that's another version of the proof. Very good. So I know these are corresponding. So what did I start with? Parallel lines. So I say, okay, the parallel lines, what does that imply about my corresponding angles? That they are congruent. So now I can say angle two is congruent to angle four. Oh. Do I have a transitive property of supplementary? Um, no. no. So do I have a substitution property of supplementary? Does that sound familiar? No. So can I just substitute angle 2 and 4 into here? No. I can't. So how am I going to get this 4 replaced with that 2? Say that... Um, <laughs> what if I turned these into measures? If these were measures, could I plug it in up here? So maybe I'm going to make this the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 4. Because congruent angles implies equal angle measures. that, now what can I do with this angle 4? I can replace it with angle 2. So notice I had to take something out of my proof. Sometimes that's going to happen. That's why you want to be doing it with pencil or I have a lot of white out. Okay? Because now you can go in there and say instead of 1 and 4 being 1 by 80, I can say 1 plus angle 2 makes 180. Why did I have to? Because I can't substitute into the word supplementary. I don't have a supplementary property of equality. Transitive and substitution only work if you have an equation or a congruent, and that had the word supplementary in it. So I'm going to bring this guy over to there. But wait! Now 1 and 2 add to 180. What does 1 and 2 adding to 180 tell me? Supplementary. That these guys are supplementary. So angle 1 is supplementary to angle 2. Because two angles that sum to 180 implies supplementary angles. So I just moved it down a notch. I just moved the step down. And now I've run out of room because this happens a lot when you do proofs in a confined space. So I'm going to have to take my arrow all the way over here to this empty spot and start thinking, okay, what does 1 being supplementary to 2 tell me? Well, how are they related to each other? They're no, the angles. Oh. I know they're supplementary. How else are 1 and 2 related? They're, uh, they're same side interior. Yeah, or consecutive interior. 
So if I have consecutive interior angles and I know they're supplementary, what happens when you combine those two? You don't make nitroglycerin. It doesn't become a unicorn. What happens when you combine same side interior angles and the fact that they're supplementary? I've got same side interior angles being supplementary will imply parallel lines. Which lines will be parallel? Well, if I look at those two angles, here's angle one and here's angle two, it looks like it's going to be BA and ED. Same side interior angle supplementary? Where is what? Shh. Try again. That's backwards from, you have it in your implied statement sheet that parallel lines implies same side or consecutive interior angles or supplementary. But it's biconditional. So I can use it backwards and say that if the same side interior angles are supplementary, it implies parallel lines. Okay? So your takeaways from this, you guys, for your homework and for the review and for the test, to solve these proofs, you're going to have to figure out how to connect the information you're given into what you're aiming at. And there may be more than one pathway, and it doesn't matter which path you take as long as you get there. So go ahead now and clear everything off for the quiz.